guess what, the friends? In this video, I'm gonna share the seven exact reasons why your New Year's diet failed and why mine didn't. Number one. You're doing way too much too fast. For example, you're building your entire life around losing weight, changing, making so many changes, making brand new diet goals, exercise goals, and trying to do it all at once. The reason I know that that's not sustainable and it can be very hard, very overwhelming and very hard to maintain, and the reason I'm making this video is because I used to weigh 275 pounds and I tried for years to lose the weight and I kept failing over and over again. I finally figured out that I was making things very difficult for myself. Once I realized that, I made some changes and that helped me lose 130 pounds and keep it off for eight years. And an example of doing way too much too fast was I did every Monday what I call the Monday morning diet. I would say, okay, Monday morning, this is it, this is the start. I'm gonna lose weight. Monday morning, chicken, broccoli, rice, no treats, two and a half to three hours of exercise every day, and that is it. The rest of my life, this is what it's gonna look like. And I committed to that every Monday, and by every Wednesday, Thursday, I failed. And I did that for years, repeated it over and over again. So what I ended up doing that worked was instead of changing way too much too fast, I focused on one to two small changes. One, I love pop. At the beginning of my journey, I drank seven regular cans of Dr. Pepper a day. Giving up pop always caused me to fail. And I wasn't ready to reduce the amount of cans. So I simply made the switch from regular to diet. I didn't give anything up and it really tasted very similar, but a regular can of Dr. Pepper is 140 calories. So just by switching from seven regular to seven diet, I saved myself a little over 900 calories a day. And that was a very easy thing for me to be consistent with and sustain. The second thing I did, I ate a bag of chips for a snack every single night. Again, when I took away the chips, it backfired. So I decided to have a bowl a big bowl of chips every night instead of a bag. So I ended up pretty much eating like half a bag instead, which was less. I was eating in a calorie deficit, still eating the chips, not giving anything up. That's what made it sustainable. And I wasn't doing way too much too fast. It was too steady. It was two simple changes that I could be consistent with that I was able to build on top of once I got the hang of being consistent with those. Kyle Sassy, my husband, he's lost the same amount of weight and kept it off for the same amount of time. And we both did the Monday morning diet over and over again and failed every time because it was too much too fast. And that's exactly what we mean by slow, one thing at a time changes. We change nothing except the pop and chips in the very, very beginning. Yep, and once we got the hang of that, we built on those changes. Number two, you're making your diet a punishment. And what I mean by that is too strict with no wiggle room. What I did and what Kyle did was we, we decided we were gonna eat only foods that were healthy, salads, chicken, broccoli, rice, only clean food, only organic food, only whole grains, only slow digesting things, no treats, and that's it, and this is it for the rest of our lives. We're only eating clean, healthy food, no more treats, no more fancy holidays, no more going to the movies and having, you know, popcorn or anything like that. It was way too strict, and we could only follow it for a couple of days, and then it failed because it wasn't realistic. Once we realized we failed enough times and we said, you know what, let's try something different. So what worked for us was a balanced diet, meaning all the food groups, healthy fats, carbs, protein, all of it, and treats. We had a portion of dessert every single day and a snack like popcorn or, you know, like a bowl of chips or whatever, like I was saying. But because we included the balance, that was what, was sustainable because we were allowing ourselves all the food that we liked and how we ate less was we portioned it out instead of focusing on calories. Both of us struggled very severely with emotional eating. So numbers were really overwhelming to us 
but portioning worked. We used the serving sizes on the backs of food packages as a guide, and that really helped us get started and really helped us look forward to what we were doing and eating, and that was a much more sustainable plan for us diet-wise. Our weight was causing both of us serious health issues to the point where our life was at risk if we didn't make changes. So we had that plus the struggle with emotional eating, and then we just took away all treats. Well, take away ice cream, the next day I'm like, could really do with some ice cream. Portion it out, but because I'm denying myself, my bowl gets bigger and bigger every day. So us building that into our plan and making it a sustainable, balanced diet with a little bit of wiggle room for things we enjoyed, that really helped us. It's why we've been able to keep the weight off for so long. And if you wanna know the exact portions and exact foods meals that I ate. I do have weight loss eBooks. The links are down below. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10% off. I also have a guilt-free cookbook and I also got pulled HTLT steps. I'm sponsored by this company. This is literally the best protein. And right now they have two winter flavors. They are seasonal and they're limited. So if you want either of these hot chocolate or white chocolate peppermint, use code Nicole Click on the link down below, use code Nicole to save yourself 10% before those go out of stock. Number three, you're being too specific with your goals and you're fixating on numbers. So this is what I did. I would say, okay, I'm ready to lose 100 pounds and I want to do it in 12 months. And I'm going to start today and I Google it and it says you should lose one to two pounds a week if you're eating, you know, in a calorie deficit. So. I would write on my calendar that I would be down two pounds every week and I would actually put on the calendar every Saturday when I would weigh in the weight that I should be. Well, that really set me up for failure because I was always trying to get to these numbers, not accounting that the, you know, I might be building muscle by, you know, walking or exercising, not accounting for the body's normal fluctuations and that really set me up for failure. So instead of focusing on the numbers on the scale so much and on the numbers of how much weight I needed to lose in a certain amount of time, I focused on eating what I liked, doing what I liked, you know, for exercise, for meals, and I focused on being consistent with those things and on feeling better in my clothes and in my body. And then I would track it by weighing myself once a week instead of getting obsessive because I did do that in the past and it just caused me to fail. So once a week I tracked my weight just to be sure I was, was getting the results, but there was no specific numbers that I needed to hit. And when I started doing it that way, I started getting results because there was no more pressure on myself. Number four. I did this so much. You're, exer you're making your exercise way too hard. So, like I said, I used to weigh 275 pounds. At that weight and size, it was very difficult for me to do even the most basic physical things like walking up and down the stairs, bending down to tie my shoes, getting up and down from a seated position. And so I would make goals that I would do HIIT training to lose weight for exercise or that I would do like hours of cardio or, you know, crazy workouts like Insanity was popular at the time. Any time that I tried to do something that was too difficult for where I was at, um, you know, weight-wise, health-wise, size-wise, and physical ability-wise, I would either end up being injured or so exhausted that I would never want to do it again. So I started to do something that I was capable of. I could walk a little bit. I did have plantar fasciitis very bad in my left foot and it did make walking difficult, but I knew I could do a little bit. So I decided to set a goal that every day for 15 minutes, I would get outside, rain, shine, snow, didn't matter, and I would walk for 15 minutes. I went at the pace that I was capable of, which was very slow at first because of my plantar fasciitis, but every day I got out there and I did it. I took a ton of breaks. Every three to five minutes I stopped at first, but, be but because I was consistent with it, I ended up, you know, after three months, I was able to go straight through the 15 minutes without stopping. And that is sustainable. And I still walk for cardio to this day. Number five, you're overcomplicating things. So this is what I did. 
I would become focused on meal timing. I need to eat my meals at a very specific time. On days off, maybe I, sh I wouldn't eat as many calories because I wasn't working out, so I shouldn't be eating as much. Oh, pre-workout, post-workout, putting my carbs around my workouts. It made it so overwhelming and complicated for me that I would end up just emotional eating and gaining weight. So I decided to make it simple. Eat what I liked every day with portion control. Now I do calories, but I lost the weight with portion control. And I focused on the things that I liked and just eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks. And however I do that, whenever I wake up, whenever I want my last meal, I just allow myself to do it and I space it out enough that I'm never really super hungry. And that really works for me. Okay. <laughs> Number six, you're focusing on the wrong thing. So this is what I did. I focused on everything except what actually mattered. I wanted to look at, it was the sugar I was taking in, the sodium, I'm not doing the right exercise, I'm not eating the right food. Anything other than what actually it takes to lose weight, which is you need to be in a calorie deficit, meaning you need to eat less. And I didn't wanna look at that. I did everything under the sun except eat less. Then I realized if I eat what I enjoy, balanced diet, include treats with portion control, I'm eating less, enjoying what I'm doing, and I don't have to focus on all these things because I'm eating less and enjoying what I'm doing. And number seven, you're expecting perfection with no room for failure. What I did every time that I started a diet was that, okay, I made the decision to lose weight, that's it. It's gonna go smooth and perfect. I'm gonna get to my goal. Everything's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna look great in my clothes. Everyone's gonna compliment me. And I didn't account for the fact that weight loss is not linear. Failure and mistakes will happen and that's normal. And I didn't know that. So when I would make a mistake, I would be so hard on myself. So if you're you know, making a mistake or you go off track, or just know that there's nothing wrong with you. That is normal. What I did though was when I would make a mistake, I learned to be gentle on myself forgive myself, get right back on the plan that I had made for myself, if as long as it was working, and then continue on and be consistent. Focusing on the consistency instead of, you know, getting mad at myself for making mistakes, and I would learn from it. If I had taken away treats, I would put it back in because maybe my work, my meal plan wasn't sustainable. So I would look at that and then you know, learn from my mistakes and move on. So the friends, I hope that this video really helps you guys because you know, Kyle and I made a ton of mistakes before we found what works, but just know you're not alone. It's normal to make mistakes and you can do this and you deserve it and you're worth it to make your journey fun and not a punishment. We love you very much. We hope this video inspires you to be gentle on yourself and love the journey. Subscribe if you didn't already, cutie, okay? And don't forget to watch this vid and this vid to see how Sassy and I enjoy our life and our food and just do beep, 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 beep and love everything. <laughs> love you. I'll catch you in the next vid. Peace, cuties. Thanks for watching, sweetheart. See ya. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.